In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to write code to convert real numbers to strings before displaying them as output. A real number is any number that you can find on the number line, including decimal numbers. It is also often referred to as floating point numbers because of the decimal point. Real numbers are often the result of a division or a very precise calculation. Now, let's look at real numbers in our program. Like before, I am first going to show you what the program must do. I will tell you when you can also start typing code in your project. Here, I display my contact form in runtime. Let me quickly show you what the program must do. First, I am going to fill all the edits with information and I am going to change the value in the age field. Now, let's look at some of the values I typed. I entered values for all my edits. I also changed the age in the spin edit from 20 to 23. I will click on the display button now to show the new output. These three lines were added to the lines property of the reach edit. This line shows the contact person's age in decades. A decade is a period of 10 years, so our code must read the value from the age spin edit and then divide the value by 10 years. It is therefore very likely that the result will be a floating point number. Our code must convert the floating point number to a string to be displayed in the reach edit. This line also reads the value from the age spin edit. Then we divide it by 100 because a century is a period of 100 years. Because the division may also yield a result that is a floating point number, we must convert it before displaying it as a string in the reach edit. This line reads the value from the age spin edit. Then we divide it by 1000 to calculate the age in millennia. A millennium is a period of a thousand years. This calculation may also yield a result that is a floating point number. So we must also convert that result before displaying it as a string. In all three cases, our results are converted to strings because they are real numbers. Like I said, a real number is a floating point number. Floating point numbers are not compatible with strings. So they cannot be concatenated with other string values. Or they cannot be displayed in a string property like the lines property of the reach edit. We first must convert a floating point number to make it compatible for concatenation and display. To convert real numbers to strings, we must use Delphi's float to string function. Let's go and do that in our contact information project. You can now also open your contact information project in Delphi and type what I'm typing. My application is back in design time. To display the last three lines I demonstrated, we must make changes in the code of the on-click event of the display button. So, double-click the display button. Delphi takes you to the event handler called BTN Display Click that we programmed in the previous tutorials. We want to keep all the statements that we programmed before. We will just append the new statements to the bottom of the click event handler. Let's first add statements to add this line to the reach edit. We must read the age in the reach edit, divide the value by 10, Convert the floating point number to a string, concatenate the result with the rest of the string and then add it to the reach edit. Let's do that on a new line. Type redoutput.lines.add Type two inverted commas between the brackets. Move your cursor between the inverted commas and type age in decades. Followed by a colon and a space. After the last inverted comma, type a space, followed by a plus, and another space. Type SEDH, followed by a dot. Type VA. Let's stop right there for a moment. We did see in the previous video that Delphi presents this list which displays the value property of the spin edit. Here and here we see that the value property is an integer, but I want you to keep this in mind. If we divide the integer by 10 to calculate the age in decades, we may get a result that is a decimal. Now, press the enter key to autocomplete the name of the property. Type a slash after the value property. In Delphi, we use a slash to do division. A decade is 10 years, so type 10. Type a semicolon after the closing bracket to enter statement. This statement is now supposed to read the value property of the age spin edit. Then concatenate it to the rest of the string and then add it to the lines property of the reach edit. But let's see if Delphi is happy with that. Run your program. Delphi immediately reports an error here. Click the OK button. 
The line that causes the error is highlighted in red. And here in the messages we see the reason for this error. The message reads, incompatible types, string and extended. I don't want to confuse you with all the programming terminology and data types. All you have to know now is that the word extended refers to a decimal number. You will learn more about it in detail in future courses. You cannot concatenate and display floating point numbers or decimal numbers as strings because they are not compatible with each other. We first need to convert the floating point number to become a string before we can concatenate it with another string in order to display it. You must use Delphi's float to string function to do the conversion. Place your cursor here after the plus and make a space. Type FLO. Press your control and space keys together. In the list that Delphi pops up, we see three items starting with the letters FLO. The second item is the float to string function that we are going to use. The last one is the float to string F function. It is also a very handy function that enables a programmer to convert and format floating point numbers. You will learn more about the float to strf function in a future course. Press the down arrow on your keyboard to select the float to string function. Here we see that float to str is a function. It takes an extended as input. Remember for the purpose of this lesson, you only have to know that extended means a floating point number. The function also returns a string as output. Press your enter key to autocomplete the float to string function. Directly after the name type an opening bracket. Here we see a queue again, indicating that the function requires an extended as an argument for the input parameter. Remove the space after the opening bracket. And then move your cursor after the 10 and type a closing bracket. Let's see if it works now. Run your project. Type values in all the edits and also change the age to 23. When you are done, click the display button. The new output in the rich edit looks like this now. This line was added. We read the age from the spin edit, convert it to a string with the float to string function, concatenate the result with the rest of the string and add the whole string to the lines of the rich edit. Your result may look a little different than mine. Mine displays a dot as the decimal separator. Yours may display a comma instead of a point. You can change that in Windows by going to the computer settings in control panel if you want. I'm not going to demonstrate how to do that because there are many versions of Windows available and the exact steps may differ from version to version. Just do a quick internet search. I'm sure you will get all the help you need to make the change. Ok, now click the close button to return to design time. Make a new line in the event handler. Next, we want to divide the age by 100 to display the age in centuries. On the new line type, redoutput.lines.add. Between the two brackets, type two inverted commas. Between the inverted commas, type age in centuries, followed by a colon and a space. After the last inverted comma, type a space, followed by a plus and another space. Now we must read the value in the age pin edit again and divide it by 100 years. The result can also be a floating point number so we can immediately start with the float to string function. Type float to str followed by brackets. Between the brackets type sedh dot value divided by 100. Close the add method with a closing bracket and end the statement with a semicolon. This statement takes the value in the spin edit and divide it by 100. The result of the division is then converted to a string and then concatenated to the rest of the sentence. And the whole string is then added to the lines property of the rich edit. Go to a new line. Next we want to calculate the age in millennia. So we must divide the value in the age spin edit by 1000 years and display the result. On the new line type redoutput.lines. Dot add. Between the two brackets type two inverted commas. Between the inverted commas type age in millennia. Followed by a colon and a space. After the last inverted comma type a space followed by a plus and another space. Type float to str followed by brackets. Between the brackets type sedh dot value type a slash and type 1000. 
Close the add method with a closing bracket and end the statement with a semicolon. This statement takes the age in the spin edit and divides it by 1000. The result of the division is then converted to a string and then concatenated to the rest of the sentence. And the whole string is then added to the lines property of the reach edit. Now run the project again to test the results. Fill all the edits with values. Also make sure that you change the age. I'm changing mine to 23 again. When you are done, click the display button. Let's look at the output again. We already saw this line when we ran the program a few minutes ago. For this line to display, we divided the current age by 100, converted the result to a string, concatenated with the rest of the sentence and added it to the lines property of the reach edit. And for this last line here, we divided the age by 1000 years, converted the results to a string, concatenated it with the rest of the sentence and also added that to the lines property of the reach edit. Click the close button. If you didn't get the correct results, you must redo the exercise and make sure you follow what I'm doing. This concludes the lesson about basic Delphi code. We will continue with this application in the new lesson, so click the save all button. In the next few lessons we will cover best practices and we will also learn how to anticipate and fix problems in Delphi. We kick the lesson off by identifying and fixing code errors. I'll talk to you again in the next video.